record this, is what we get if we uh, multiply by something every time instead of adding. There is a formula for this, okay? The formula is as follows. S sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power divided by 1 minus r. I'll be fixing to tell you. N is the number of terms, right? That we're adding. A sub 1 is, of course, the first term. And R is what we call the common ratio. You should remember this from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Common ratio, in other words, this is the thing. This is your multiplier between terms. Okay. To find R, there's an easy formula for finding R. You take the second term and you divide it by the first term. One term and divide it by the successive term right before it. It's the previous term, okay? So if you notice, there are three things you need to know in this formula. You need to know A sub 1, you need to know R, and you need to know N. Okay? Is there a glare for y'all? Okay, good. Because there is for me, but I'm at a different angle than you. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we find a sub 1, r, and n every time, guys. a sub 1, r, and n, and we plug in. So what is n? Let's start with n. We're trying to find s sub 9. N is 9. Yes, so n is always going to be right there. So n is 9. What is a sub 1? Yeah, the first term. So there's a sub 1, so it's 2. R is going to be, if to find R, we're going to take one term and divide it by the term just before it. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. You can just do it in your head. That's fine, too. So now we're going to take those three things and put it in that formula. S sub 9 is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus R to the nth power divided by 1 minus R. And that gives you the sum. And that you throw in your calculator. Just do your alpha y equals, get it in the fractional form, and then just plug stuff in, please. You're going to get a really big number. Now remember, these are being multiplied every time, not, I mean, you're being multiplied by something every time, so of course it's going to either get much bigger or much smaller, faster. All right, so try two for yourself. Go ahead and find a sub 1. Find r. And find n and plug in. You're looking for s sub 8 this time. As a fraction, you should get 765 over 16.
then probably you didn't put in, you probably didn't put parentheses where you needed to. You cannot make it one plus 0.5 to the eighth power because that negative is also being raised to the eighth power. And so it becomes a positive. That's typically where people make their mistake. Yep. When you put it in there, you put it in your calculator exactly how it's written on your paper. You get 47.8125, which then if you hit math fraction, gives you 765 over 16. Yep. Now, what happens if you don't know what N is? Like in number three, if you start looking at this, you know A sub one, it's negative four. R is what? Two? So you got a couple choices. You can crank out from negative four all the way up to 16,000 and something, which is not a lot of fun, but you can. You can just keep multiplying by two and write them all out until you get there. Or you can actually solve them using methods that you learned in this class. To so solve for N, we know this. And you may not remember this, but also another formula you need is a sub n is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. This is the geometry version of finding the nth term. Well, we know what the nth term is, don't we? Think about it. Nth term is this. That would be the nth term. All right, so when we plug in... We're going to do this. We're going to say, okay, so negative 16,384 is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So now we can divide, can't we? Divide both sides by negative 4, and you get 2 to the n minus 1 power equals positive 4,096. So you can either figure out what that is, two to what power, if it's two to some power, or you can solve it using natural log. Yeah, that thing. You apply natural log to both sides. This is the easy version of it. If you apply natural log to both sides, what, is, what happens to this? The exponent swings to the front, doesn't it? So what we get is n minus 1 times natural log of 2 equals natural log of 4096. So now all we have to do is divide and then add 1 to both sides, right? So I will get my n. So divide natural log of 496 by natural log of 2, and then add 1 to it, and you're going to get n is 13. Okay? Once we have that, then we can plug into the formula. S sub 13 is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power divided by 1 minus r. Guys, the hard work's not going to be finding the sum. The hard work's going to be finding the things, usually n. If anything's going to be hard, it'll be hard finding n. Negative 32,764. So now, what I would like for you to do is I like, would like for you to solve number four, which is a like type of problem. Let's make sure you know how to get the N out of that.
Now remember what I said, you can, if you get stuck, just multiply by until you get all the way up to that number, right? But you work number four just like you work number three with different numbers, okay? It's the same process. Should have got n equals 7. And then moved on to plug into the formula and bang, you get your answer. Now for 5 and 6, they are just calculator problems. Is there an issue, Nick? Do not get n equals 7? You need to work out the in-between steps? Okay. So the first thing you had to do was divide by 2,500 on both sides. Okay, so you get 0 0.8 to the n minus 1 power equals whatever 655.36. Right? So now I'm going to apply natural log to both sides and swing this to the front. So I get n minus 1 equals natural log of that 0.262144 divided by natural log of 0 0.8. And so then I'm just going to add 1 to both sides and I get n equals 7. And then you just plug it in the formula. Okay? Is everybody good so far? You're good, you're good. What about you, James? Got it? Okay. Okay. Five and six are calculator. They're just summation. Do we really need to go over those? Use summation on your calculator, okay? 
Same thing for seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm not gonna waste a bunch of our time doing that. Now let's talk applications. And then we'll talk about converging and diverging. Applications are the same thing, guys. You just have to find a sub 1 and an R and plug in to the formula. So let's read through number 11 and see if we can't figure out what all of those things are. Because I'm pretty sure if you can figure out what a sub 1 is, if you can figure out what n is, and you can figure out what r is, that you can plug in and do the math. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it's the calculator that trips you up. So start reading the problem. In their first month, they raised what? $4,000. What is that telling me? Yes, that is A sub 1. Each month after, they raised 1.5% more than the previous month. This is not R, but this is a decimal, isn't it? 1.5% would be 0 0.015, wouldn't it? However, that only gives us a little chunk. We need all of what we had the month before plus another 1.5%, don't we? So R is going to be 100 plus 1.5%, which is... 101.5%, which now is 1.015. That's R. Does everybody understand why R has a 1 stuck on the front of it? If it were going down, instead of adding to 100, we would subtract. Let's say it went down by 5% every year. It would be 0.95, 100 minus 5%. Switch to a decimal. And then N. Keep reading. Find the total money raised in four years. What is N? What were we talking about? Months? But they've given us years. So what is N going to be? How many months are in a year? 12 and then, yeah, times four is 48 months. So N is 48. So guess what? We are trying to find S sub 48. A sub one times one minus R the nth power divided by one minus r. And you're going to round to how many decimal places? How about two? That's how much they raised in four years. Yep. Now, the one that you ought to really pay attention to, though, is number 12. Amari invested 12000 in a retirement plan with an expected annual return of 7%. What's the balance of the account? Now, Amari did not put any more money in. He just put 12,000 in, 7%, 30 years. Look at what his retirement's gonna be. So what does the 12,000 represent? 
a sub 1. What is R? Yes, 1.07. 100 plus 7 percent. What is N this time? Thirty years, right? So thirty. So S sub thirty is what? Find out. Yeah. Now, guys, I want you to understand. He only put twelve thousand in. In the first year, walked away for thirty years, came back, checked his balance, and went, "Oh, I won the lottery." He turned $12,000 into $1.1 million by simply sticking it into an a interest bearing account for 7% and walking away. Now, if this right here does not convince you to start saving for your retirement early, I don't know what would. So if you had $12,000 right now and stuck it into an account, now, you can't put it in like a savings account because they earn like half a percent. They earn hardly anything. But if you put it in, say, like a money market account that had a good rating, they earn, these days, they've been earning like 8 and 9%. So that would be even higher. Um, but if you earn, could find one that earns pretty commonly 7% annually or better, then in 30 years when you went to retire at, say, 47, because that's 30 years from now for most of you, You'd be able to. You'd have one point one million dollars in the bank. I know, but here's the thing. Here's the argument I want you to make. If you did this for only twenty years, let's say you worked for ten years, saved up twelve thousand, and put it in, you'd really only have like four hundred and thirty-nine thousand and something. So in 10 years, if you're waiting 10 years to start your retirement, so let's say you go and start to work. If you wait 10 years to start saving until say you're 27, and then you retire at 47, you've lost over half of what you could have had. So even though you don't have it right now, when you start working, guys, when you start working, first real job, I'm not talking about McDonald's, Although, I would encourage you to be putting away 10% from the very beginning, putting away 10% of your salary into an IRA. That's nice. It is an individualized retirement account. IRA, that's what it stands for. And a Roth IRA means you've paid, you've paid taxes on it already, which means when you pull it out, you don't have to pay taxes on it. So, if you start saving, even at your piddly little job that you might have, and you start putting 10% of your check away every time, then within the first, you'd be surprised how fast you'll end up at $12,000. And then just walk away from it and don't touch it. You can't pull money out of it. But if you walk away from it from a decent, when you get it to 12,000, then put it in into uh, an investment account for that's safe, that earns about 7%, and in about 30 years from then, you can walk, out, walk back in and get your million something dollars out of the bank. Save early, I think, is the, is the thing here. Save early for your retirement. You're much better off saving at the front end when you're young for your retirement than you are at the far end when you're my age because there's not that much time for it to grow. We started saving when my husband went to work um, when he was 21. When he was 21, and we had... Uh, a, didn't put a ton away. We put 10% of what he makes away. They match 8%. Government matches 8%. So it's 18%. We get 18%. Um, 
and we're getting closer to retirement now. And it's been growing for about 30 years now, a little more than 30 years. Got a nice chunk of change in the bank to retire on. So we're actually going to be in better shape after we retire than we are now. We're actually going to have more money when we retire. Get off your phone. If you're on your phone, get off that phone. Really? Yeah, huh? We looked at this. We looked at this and said, "What if you only took five thousand dollars and put it in there for fifteen years?" Yes, I know. That's what that's what Third Block said. If you took five thousand dollars today and put it in a bank account at seven percent interest in fifteen years, walk back to it, you'd have almost two hundred thousand in the bank. It'd be enough. You can pay them back in 15 years, plus buy yourself a house. Yeah, you get $5,000, put it in the bank, on, put it in something that earns about 7%, and then in 15 years, when you are 30, 32, right, and you want to buy a, you want to buy a house, you can buy it. You could probably buy a pretty decent house for 2,000. You probably buy a fairly decent house. Starter house, cash free or uh, debt free. All right, keep going. Here we go. Infinite versus infinite versus uh, geometric series. There are two types of infinite geometric series. There's the kind that gets smaller and smaller and smaller. This is what we call a convergent series. Okay, we call this convergent. When it gets smaller and smaller, look at it. You go from a half to a quarter to an eighth to a sixteenth. In other words, it is getting smaller. What happens is when you start adding them up, because it gets smaller and smaller, that term gets closer and closer and closer to zero, doesn't it? So close that it effectively ends up adding up to a single number. Okay? This would be 0.5. 0.5 plus 0.25 is 0.75. If we add again, plus another, you get 0.875. This is me adding first term, first two terms, first three terms, first four terms would be 0.9375. Then we're gonna add another and so on. This is going to go to 0 0.96875, 0 0.984375. Can you see what it's converging on? What is this getting closer? What is the sum of this getting closer and closer and closer to? Yeah, one. They don't all add up to one, but they do. This one does. This one adds up to one. Now, this is a convergent series. What we're going to notice is how do we know it's getting smaller without looking at it into each individual term? What we can do is we can just look at R. If we have a quarter, which is 0.25, and we divide it by 0.5, we get an R that is one half, don't we? That R is less than one. If the absolute value of R is less than one, then the series is convergent. So if you can see it with your own eyes that the terms get smaller, that's fine. It's convergent. But if you can't, you have to check R and see if R is less than 1. Now, why do we put absolute value around it? Because we don't care if it's positive or negative. We just need to know that it's fractional less than 1. That's anywhere from negative 1 to positive 1, isn't it? Okay. Now, look at the other series. The other series, what's happening to the terms? Yes, they're getting larger, which means that when we keep adding, the number's just going to continue to grow. So we've got 0 0.5, 1.5, 3.5, 7.5. Now we're going to add 8 to it, 15.5, and so on. We add 16, we get 31.5. So where do we see the sum of this thing going? The 
if we add an infinite number of terms, what's the, what's the answer going to be? Yeah, positive infinity. The sum is going to be infinity. That's what we get, what we call the divergent series, when the sum is going to be infinity, or negative infinity. Okay? Now, look at R. If we come out here and take R, if we take one term and divide it by the previous term, we get an R of 2. That R is bigger than 1. Guys, we can only find the sum of a convergent series. A divergent series, the sum is always going to be infinity, which isn't really a number. It's just an idea, isn't it? Yeah. So these have no sum. So the first thing we need to do, this is nice, because if we can figure out it's divergent, we're done. Can't find the sum of it. If it's convergent, then we plug into the formula. There is a formula for an infinite series, geometric series. It's easier than the other one. We call it S, not S sub N, because N would be infinity, and what, who wants that? Right? It turns out it is just A sub 1 over 1 minus R. Okay? So in this one, we don't need n because n is infinity. We just need 1 minus r. We need r and a sub 1. So how do we find that? Well, take a look at them. First thing we need to figure out is r because that's going to tell us where it's, whether it's convergent or divergent. Okay? So how can I find r here? What's the easiest way to do that? Yep. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So we take the absolute value of negative 6 and we get 6. And we say that is bigger or smaller than 1? Bigger. So this guy is divergent. We stop here. There is no sum. It's divergent. There is no sum. However, let's look at 14. Maybe. Let's look at 14. First thing we have to find is R. Nick, how would I find R? Mm -hmm. That's going to reduce to one third, isn't it? So is this guy convergent or divergent? Mm -hmm. Yep, it is less than one, so it is convergent. which means we need to find S. So we're going to do A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So that becomes 72 over 1 minus 1 third. So what do you get? 108. It's just that easy, guys. Okay. What about these down here? You cannot do these type on your calculator, guys. Look at 17, 18, 19, and 20. You cannot do these on your calculator. Anybody want to guess why? How about right here? There's not an infinity symbol you can plug in your calculator. So guess what? You have to plug into the formula, which means that you need to identify a sub 1 and you need to identify r. Lucky for you, they're easily identifiable in these formulas. This first number right here is a sub 1. This guy right here, guess what it is? R. So looking at R, what do you see? been binging me binging me binging me binging me binging me oh 
Okay. So is this thing convergent or divergent? Convergent. And what was the sum? Yeah. Yep. Eight hundred and ninety six. All right. How about nineteen? What is R? What is A sub one? A sub 1 is 1 third, right? And what is R? So here's my question for you. If R is negative 7 over 6, what is this guy? Convergent or divergent? Oh, well, 18, the answer is 37.5, and it's convergent. Yes. All right. If it's divergent, you don't have to do anything else, do you? If it's convergent, you need to finish up and find the S for it. All right. Does anybody have any questions about this? Y'all good?